Younger people, specifically, uh, you know, members of the Young Americans for Liberty, are looking for ways to educate themselves on issues, you know, in ways that they're not going to be educated by college professors or uh, by the media and things like that. What What was it that initially interested you in Austrian economics and liberty, and you know, what were some of those, uh, you know, fundamental texts that uh, got you involved with it, and uh, you know, has led to you where you are now? It was a lot more difficult to find books when I was growing up in high school and college. And I didn't have a whole lot of interest in college, but more when I got into medical school, I started looking around. But in the late 50s, you know, some of the books I read, uh, all the Ayn Rand novels, and uh, Dr. Chivago got my attention, and then Hayek got my attention with uh, The Road to Serfdom. And then I went one one book to another, and became fascinated with Austrian economics. But the group that helped me the most back then get the literature was the Foundation for Economic Education, uh, which is was on, which is still on uh, in a town called Irvington on the Hudson in, in New York. And Leonard Reed ran it back in those days. So when everything else was Keynesian, we had no Mises Institute, there was no Cato group, and none of these things existed. And uh, but the, the uh, Foundation for Economic Education did provide a lot of literature, and and I can remember getting uh, Bastiat's Law from there, and that's still being circulated—a great little book. Um, but then later on, uh, uh, I I did get to meet a lot of the Austrian economists. I met, uh, or at least heard lecture, heard Mises lecture, met Hayek, had dinner with him, knew Murray Rothbard real well, knew uh, Senholtz very well. And uh, have stayed close to that whole movement, and now, of course, uh, with the Mises Institute, a, a, a group that I helped start in the early mm -hmm. '80s, and uh, I think Lou Rockwell does an excellent job in providing literature today to find the textbooks and the things to read. If you're really interested in Austrian economics, you ought to know about the Mises uh, uh, Institute uh, to find this literature. Um. Now, now that all the uh, students for Ron Paul groups have sort of uh, molded into this Young Americans for Liberty organization, what are your hopes for an organization like that moving forward, and what kind of role does uh, activism on a college campus have for the freedom movement at large? Well, it's to galvanize and to educate. I mean, on campuses you're supposed to be learning, so I would hope that it's more than just a political action group to chant and cheer uh, Republicans over Democrats. That would be pretty boring. Uh, but uh, some of our meetup groups, uh, you know, right after the campaign was over, we didn't have immediate direction say, do this, do this, do that. But a lot of them evolved into reading groups. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they joined the Campaign for Liberty, and, and a lot uh, went into Young Americans for Liberty. But um, I think the number one thing is education. You know, and campuses are a good place to do that. And then, and then becoming politically active. And I don't know what kind of college activities will be, but there are local elections and state elections and referendum and, and all these kind of things that uh, get involved. And uh, our greatest uh, receptions were on college campuses. So uh, to keep the spirit alive, I think, is a pretty important role for uh, Young Americans for Liberty. Why don't you think uh, that, you know, considering the, the response that you got from college students uh, in regards to the Federal Reserve and to the gold standard and these sort of issues that you wouldn't think resonate with young people, why don't you think there is more of a push in Congress, uh, you know, to, for sound money? Or why is it that you're the only one fighting for this or the only one seem to be talking about this? It, it's a lack of understanding uh, is the most important reason. Mm -hmm. uh, probably 99% of the members of Congress have been taught in in government schools and uh, they've been taught Keynesian economics and it has not not fascinated them at all to study any further than that and those individuals who really understand it and like it you know because there's a lot of power and control when you control money and uh, uh, they they want it to go and those who benefit tend to just either you know go along with it because they don't understand it or they think that it must be a benefit and for years it has been because uh, deficits didn't really matter or they could be monetized we could keep borrowing and and there was no pain and suffering until this financial bubble uh, built which was predictable and now it's uh, it, it burst and we're seeing the consequence but uh, <clears throat> they they go along with it because they don't know 
But the impressive thing is that these young people who are responding will and must play an important role because it's their numbers. As they graduate and go into teaching and go into journalism and go into politics and, and influence uh, government, that uh, this will be the big issue. And it has been big issues. It was a big issue at the time of our revolution. It was a big issue at the time of Jackson. It was a big issue after the Civil War because they had gone off the gold standard. It was a big issue uh, uh, with, uh, with election in the 1900, and they talked about money. But we really haven't talked much about it since then. So it must be the big issue. There are, there are a lot of discussions going on right now trying to replace it with a worldwide fiat standard run by the United Nations. Mm -hmm. That would be a disaster. The competition has to come from the next generation of Americans who understand sound money and can answer the questions on why we should never give this authority and power to a secret central bank like the Federal Reserve to create money out of thin air. And uh, just as a final note, there have been uh, some, some rumors that you're writing a book on the Federal Reserve. Um, is that true? Uh, what points would you like to get across uh, on the Federal Reserve that you think aren't being... Uh it is true. And uh, if the publishers accept the title, which they probably will if I insist on it, very simply, I've uh, come up with a title that somebody else gave me at our rallies. And the Fed. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was just... That's been a rallying that might, crowd. That yeah. might have been one of the greatest parts <laughs> of the campaign. When college kids all of a sudden start saying, and the Fed, and the Fed, mm -hmm. and without prompting. I, mean, mm -hmm. I used to chuckle over sure. it all. So, yes, I have written it down, and I'm having some editors work with me. And we, we, It's not going to be big. I mean, just like the Revolution, it's a mm -hmm. small book, easy to read and easy to distribute. The goal is to distribute it, and uh, hopefully within a few months uh, we'll have it done. But I believe it will come, come about. Sure. And the Revolution was first on the bestseller list, so if, if, a, if a message about the Fed can get out in that yeah. sort of way, uh, that would be one of the most uh, very significant... Yeah, it would uh, be interesting. I, <laughs> I, I, I keep getting a little bit uh, concerned about whether the Fed are, will get the attention, because even though we did well with the other book, you know, I travel all the time, and I'd go to every bookstore and every airport. I never saw the book once, sure. so, but it, it did, it still sold, but I still saw books right out in front of the other candidates, yeah. you, know, you know, Huckabee and the other guys, they, sure. they all had their books out there, but I never saw uh, the revolution out front. But the, the strength of the, uh, the message is probably what sells it. I, I think, though, in this day and age, let's say all the publishers, there's a great cons grand conspiracy <laughs> uh, that uh, they're not going to let me publish it. We'll self-publish it. You right. know, we can sell a lot of books sure. uh, just on the internet, but there's still a profit motive out there. Uh, even though I see the leadership of both parties working in collusion, there's still bookstores and publishers that uh, like to make money. Matter of fact, the publisher so far has expressed a lot of interest in saying, you know, because oh, well, they sold mm -hmm. this other book, and if they can make a few bucks, and yeah, maybe maybe book sales might even go down in a recession, but our book sale might go up. Mm -hmm. Who knows if, if we offer an answer. Sure. But there certainly is a lot more interest in the Federal Reserve today than there has been in a long, long time. And I would say it's about time. Yeah, and there would be certainly more uh, interest if the book does well. Um, yeah, and that then that, that's another way to apply to people's uh That's right. That will get more attention to it. Sure. Uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Okay. Paul. I really appreciate you sitting down uh, to talk to me. And uh, Very good. good. Nice <laughs> being with you. <laughs> Are you interested in running in 2012?